Hello everyone, Mark with Grimtastic Baits. Gonna do something a little different today. You know, there's a lot of questions I hear over and over and over about how much salt do I add to my plastic? My answer is always zero. I think it's probably the worst thing you could do to a plastic. But today we're gonna do a little experimenting because I used to add salt to plastic. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use, I only have a swim bait blend, so I'm gonna soften it up to a worm blend using some, uh, some worm oil. Once I soften it up, I'm gonna fill it up to one cup of Plastisol, and I'm gonna shoot it clear. I'm gonna make it clear as kind of a example of what the plastic's gonna do, how it looks. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do probably, let's do something bright. Let's do Neo Pink. Then I'm going to shoot some Neo Pink without salt in it, and as a as yet another kind of a baseline. Then I'm going to do the standard quarter cup of salt to one cup of Plastisol, and I'm going to keep doing that, adding maybe. What I'll do then is I'm going to shoot it. I'll be shooting everything into the stick worm bait and or the stick worm mold for the baits. I'm going to keep an example of two of each one, but I'm going to remelt the rest and add a little bit of Plastisol each time and maybe like a teaspoon or tablespoon of salt, well, a teaspoon of salt probably, each time to try and keep it as standard as I can. Each time I do that, I am also going to vacuum chamber because salt holds bubbles. Just another reason not to use salt. It holds, not by, I don't mean it holds bubbles, it holds moisture which causes bubbles. So this is going to be a long, tedious process for me. And what I'm going to end up doing is showing the differences in how the worm looks. I'll fill up the test tank and I'll do how the worm sinks. And I'm also going to do how the worm, basically how salt affects how strong the worm is. Like what point do you get to before the worm just falls apart? It can't take it anymore. The plastisol can't hold up with all the salt. I'm kind of curious about that one myself. So... I'm gonna be doing a lot of cuts. I'm not gonna show you the entire process because that's boring and this video is going to take me a long time to do, especially setting up the test tank and everything and doing drop rates and, and all that. So hopefully this will be one of those end all be all examples of using salt and why not to use it. And uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get started from there. All right, so. First shot, this is, as promised, the clear. It's not focusing. Ah. It's like glass. I mean, that is really, really clear. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to juice it. And I'm, hmm. Now I'm thinking, maybe I should do... I'm going to do two separate runs one to show what it looks like clear with salt and then another one as a base that is clear with the pigment so this project just got a lot longer but here's one of my first baselines as promised okay so that is no salt pink that is vibrant, very beautiful. I like it a lot. So next we're going to do the clear with salt. And for that, I'm gonna to have to reheat that bad boy back up. And I did add some Plastisol, did add a little more oil. I'm gonna vacuum chamber it. And then I'm gonna add the salt, have you guys watch what happens when I add the salt to this mixture and then run it through the vacuum pump. Okie dokie. So, heated up plastic. I don't know if you can tell or not, but very few bubbles. It's been vacuumed. So, I'm going to do something that makes me nervous and take my gloves off. I hate doing this, but we're going to go ahead. There's a quarter cup. As you can see, we're right at the one cup line. And here comes the salt. Ugh. Okay, here's what they recommend. Quarter cup of salt to every cup of plastic. Oh, that just pains me even to do that. 
Ugh. All right, oh, look at it already. We're bubbling. This stuff holds so much moisture. So let me see if I can... Oh, it's like sludge. By the way, I forgot to mention, I am using a floating worm blend, or floating swim bait blend, but I did soften up to worm blend. And, mm, mm, mm. I don't know why people want to do this to their plastics. So this has drastically dropped the ton. It's kind of turning it into a, a soup again, or a stew more like. So I'm going to heat it up. As soon as I heat it up, if you trust me, I'm going to come right back and I'm going to show you what it looks like heated back up, kind of mixed in and blend a little better. And then we're going to vac pump it. And I'm going to try and show you what happens in the vacuum pump with plastic and salt. All right, we are back. So let's see. God, there's just tons of bubbles in this right now. Okay, now it's stirring a little smoother. We're sitting right at 345. Don't hate me for that, Travis. Yes, I use a laser gun, but I do stir when I stir. I try and pull stuff off from the bottom so it gets a good even heating. All right, we're at an even temperature test. So here we go. Um, this is gonna be kind of strange, but I'm gonna move this in and then I'm gonna move the camera and see if I can turn everything on one-handed. We'll see how this works. So, valve, valve, gonna get loud. There you can see the salt starting to come up the air. All that moisture rising to the top. All right, so right now that is at twenty seven on my uh on my gauge. So you can kind of tell just how nasty the salt is. So we will release the pressure and we are going to shoot that now. And I still have bubbles on the top. And if you wonder why I didn't take that much plastic, it's because I have three of the cavities blocked off, so it'll only fill two cavities at a time. Because why well, have five examples when you really only need two? One for testing and one in case something goes south on you and you have a backup. So I will continue to treat this just like I would any other bait. Top it off. And when it's cool, I'll come back to you and show you what we got on that. All right, just remove them from the mold. Look at that. There's no clarity to that. That what I do add white I mean seriously it looks like I added white it's just wait until I add the pink and you're gonna see the difference it makes it's I mean it's much heavier don't get me wrong and it's definitely got the sag going as opposed to well not by much actually not a huge difference okay I'm a little shocked at that uh, I don't know what to take or make of that. Um, hmm. We're just going to keep going, see what happens. Next up, I'm going to add the pink. Okay, kind of back to our salt baseline. I added 
20 drops to a half cup back there. So I'm going to put 40 drops in for the cup here. Counting to myself, yes. Whoa, shoot. Okay, you know what? A couple more, and we're going to call that... We'll call that 40. That's pretty darn close, I'm sure. So, there's the pink we're getting. Now, I can already tell just by looking at it. It is nowhere near as bright as what the other one was. But I'm still getting bubbles here. I'm going to vacuum it out again and shoot it. And I'll show you the results on pink with salt in it. Okay, so there's the pink with salt in it. Right off the bat, I can tell. I don't know if you can tell on camera or not, but we'll see. Uh, I can't really see it on camera. This one is a lot more vibrant looking than what these are. And I'm just predicting that as we go, these will get duller and duller in color. Not because I'm not still adding, I'm still gonna add like a drop every time I remake these worms so that the oil, the plastisol, the salt, and the colorant all still stay as close to, you know, on the, on the up and up and on the level as I can. You never know, maybe in the end this, uh, this video surprised me, but overall what I was wanting to do is see how much salt is too much before these worms, I can't even hold them, they'll just fall apart. So next up, I'm gonna heat it up, get everything back up to the same levels, vacuum it out, add a eighth of a cup more salt, and do this all over again. I'm gonna do it in eighth cup increments because I think anything more than that, blah, 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 can't talk today. Anything more than that, and uh, we won't see what the real results are. Okay, so here we are again. Everything set back to base, and I'm gonna do an eighth. Now it is gonna look like it's a little more than an eighth because, well, it's rounded and shallower at the bottom, so I am going to add a little more for that reason. Which pains my heart. Yep, I just did that. This is going to become soupy again. Not soupy, stew-like, I should say, just like I did last time. Uh, more bubbles. So... I'm going to spare you the excitement of watching it get vacuum chambered again and reheated, and I will just show you what the results are. God, it's even getting kind of difficult to... First, plastisol, anyways, get kind of difficult to... Ugh. Anyway, I'll come back to you. So, let me turn the light back on here, sorry. And I got to show you something. That shot that I just ran... Look, and I could tell the second I started shooting it, it was like 340 degrees and it was setting so fast that it actually only allowed one worm to fill. That's insane. Um, so I am going to, I'm gonna redo that shot. We're gonna redo that because I want good examples. So, I did not think something like that would happen, but it is setting up a lot, lot quicker. The plastic is. Oh, look at that. There's even like a chunk of salt there. That's nasty. Good God. And I mixed the hell out of this. So, ugh. you can just hear. And then look at that. It's taking no effort to pull that part. I don't think we're going to make it to a half cup. Um, well, no, the next thing up is half cup if I can get this to work. So anyway, just thought I'd show you that little update real quick. All right, so this is, oh God, what is this? This is three eighths of a cup of salt. Yes, it flashed, I know. Because this, I panicked and I thought, okay, 
with what happened with that last one, I'm going to press down hot and heavy, really fast, really hard. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it flashed. Anyway, that's what we're looking at on that one. We're, uh, I'm almost wondering if, God, the, the, I would expect there to be more sag. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how else to describe it in it at this point, but I can feel it's it's a lot heavier and I can feel it's getting really weak. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but um, next up is uh, another eighth a cup, which is gonna put us at a half a cup of plastic. That's gonna be, what ratio is that? That's like two plastic to one. Yeah, that's like two to one. So we're gonna do two to one. I just realized something else too, this is really dumb. By the time it's done, I'm gonna have a full cup of salted plastisol that's gonna be worthless. But, eh, whatever. Maybe I'll recover it by uh, adding some hardener to it and uh, make some really stiff crawdads. I don't know. All right, we are vacuumed out, back to par, back to one cup. <laughs> Here comes another eighth. This is gonna put us at a half a cup of salt per one cup of plastisol. That is so painful every time. No, I don't like to know that's gloves on. And we're just a bubbling and a foaming away already. Holy crud. How much is too much? We're getting there. Um, this is really not pretty. It's getting to be like brownie batter. Yes, I bake. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to heat it up and vacuum it out and we'll shoot that. Half cup of salt to one cup of, to one cup of plastic. Well, here we are. We are now at this is the half, the half cup of salt to the one cup of plastisol. Now, these aren't cured or anything, but I'm seeing less and less droop the more salt I add, which was what kind of fascinated me at the very beginning. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but these things are chunky. Um, also, I'm noticing that it is almost plugging up my injector as I draw it up. I'm going to have to be shooting much hotter. So I'm going to take the heat up to about 360 on this next one. And the next one you ask, what is that? Well, that's going to put us at five eighths of a cup of salt. I, I think our breaking point is going to be three quarter cup to one cup plastisol. I think that's going to be the breaking point. But let's keep going. <laughs> I wanted to show you that. The more salt you add, the harder and harder it is for this vacuum chamber to draw that air out. That's another big issue. Anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. The last one that I did almost boileth over. It was crazy how much it was boiling. All right. So, back again, back to par, everything's level and even again. Another third, or eighth, sorry. Oh. It's just proof that the salt hoids, holds oils. Just, just proof that this oils moisture holds 
moisture. Great googamoogas. <laughs> this is stupid. Oh, wow. Okay, I've now figured out what it is that they put on the roads in the winter. It's salt and plastisol. I'm not sure that the injector is going to be able to draw this up. Um, it's going to take a lot of stirring, too. It's not good. I thought the breaking point might be where the worm doesn't hold together, but now I'm thinking the breaking point might actually be just where you can't physically make the worm. It's gotten really dull in color, too, even though adding a drop each time. I'm going to have to... <laughs> Here's something else I'm predicting is going to happen. I predict that I'm going to have to heat this up so high to get it viscous again that I may muffin this thing. And if you've never muffined Plastisol before, it's not fun or pretty. It's toxic. It's stinky. It smokes. It can catch fire. But in the name of science, let's keep going. I figured I'd show this one getting shot just because I think we may be at the point where... I'm not sure that the equipment will keep working. I am, it's like I'm just grinding this stuff into the glass. But here we go, five eighths. Oh my gosh. Look at that, it's like syrup, brownie batter. Wait, I don't know what. That was fun. When it cools off, we'll take a look. All right, there it is. That's uh, five eighths. That's, I really can't believe this is still going on. It's not breaking when I try to wiggle it. If I can get a full circle out of it. I think the point where I can't get a full circle, that's when it's quitting time. I think that'd be a good, I think that's a good way to prove a breaking point. Or the equipment just won't shoot it anymore. But um, I'm going to go up another eighth. That's going to put us at three quarters of a cup of salt. We are really getting close to a one-to-one -one ratio, which I didn't think was possible. So let's keep going. All right. This is three quarters. Wait, no. Five eighths cup, right? God, I lost track. 340. I'm having trouble getting this thing to heat up. Um, I'm going to put it in for another 30 seconds and inject it. And at this point, the vacuum chamber is null and void. It's just not pulling at all anymore. So, heat it up and we'll give it a try and I'll show you what I come back with. So I'm a dimwit. And heating up, I didn't even realize. I was heating up and mixing three eighths still. I hadn't even added the other eighth yet. So here we go. Three quarter cup. Another eighth will put us at three quarters what I should say. Oh, I got that out of the way. Huh? At this point the salt isn't even sinking. It, it just sits there. I've made an island. deal. I was like making a, just a cheap generic chart and you see my prediction was only to get to three quarters cup. We're there. So I'm a little shocked. I will, you know, God, what's the heat on this? it drops like a rock. I'm down to 320 already and I just reheated it. So I'm going to heat it up again. See how high I can get it. See if I can get it to inject. Okay, three quarters. And you can see the equipment is starting to fail. I didn't get a full fill on that one. And 
there is no droop. Well, I should say there's no droop, but we're getting weak. We're getting really weak. But even with the shorter one, which should have more tension, still getting a circle. So I guess it's on to seven eighths, isn't it? That's incredible. All right, I'm gonna heat it up. Show you adding another eighth of a cup to get us to seven eighths. All righty. Well, let's see what we got for temp. 350. I know I'm going to add the salt. I'm going to have to reheat again. This is insane. So another eighth. All right. Seven eighths, right? We're, we're one eighth of a cup away from a one to one ratio at this point. And again, we have our nice little island. And this is going to drop the temp on this drastically. But I'm going to stir the living daylights out of this batter and get it heated up. I'm gonna have to probably get close to 400 this time, I'm thinking. I don't know if you can burn salt. Can you burn salt? I wonder if I'll be burning salt before I burn plastic salt. Yeah. That's something for Wiki. Anyway. <laughs> I'll be back to you in a minute after I get them shot. <sighs> Seven eighths. Our neon pink has gone to a pink bubble gum, if you haven't noticed. Um, there's, I mean, these things are, this room. <laughs> In water, that's gonna sink like a rock. Uh, let's give it the old circle. It's still holding. I'm truly amazed because our next step is a full cup of, <laughs> another eighth is gonna give us one full cup of salt to one cup of plastisol. And I really didn't think I would see that. So, I guess I keep going. This kind of isn't even funny anymore. It's, uh, it's bubbling like a tar pit. This episode's been brought to you by Morton Popcorn Salt. I use popcorn salt, or used to use popcorn salt, I should say, because it is like one of the finest salts out there. Now, something to be interesting is try this with glass beads. I do not have any glass beads, but I know a lot of guys will use glass beads in replacement of salt. And it's supposed to be just as heavy, not take as much, and retain the color really well, unlike what you're seeing here, which is a pink bubble gum. By the way, we're now at a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm thinking at this point, just the way it's feeling, the worms are going to start giving way. I, I don't know that it's going to pass the circle test at this point. And I hope it doesn't because this video is going to start running real long if it doesn't. All right, here it is. Don't know if anyone's done it before, but that is your one-to-one -one ratio worms. One cup of plastic salt and one cup of salt. And God. okay, I I'm getting a little tired of this. I'm I'm not wanting to do this anymore. This has taken me hours. Um, oh look at this though. We're building up memory. Hmm. So I'm tired of this. So let's go big or go home, right? I'm going to do I'm gonna add another quarter cup instead of doing an eighth cup step. So we will be at one and one quarter cups of salt here in a minute. Okay, so like I was saying, go big or go home.
one and a quarter cup salt to one cup plastic salt. <sighs> I'm an idiot for this. Why am I doing this? I thought I was going to be done. Oh my gosh. I thought I was going to be done like an hour, hour and a half ago with this. Mix it up, add plastic salt, add a drop of colorant. Heat it up, vacuum it out, blah, 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 over and over and over. Inject it, remelt. Yeah. I think we finally found the breaking point. But I'm going to heat her up. Look at that. That's at 305 degrees. <laughs> uh, yay. All right, as you see, as I continue to add salt, my level has rose up significantly because I'm not shooting enough salt. So maybe this isn't very scientific, but at the same time, I'm adding way more salt at a higher ratio than I am adding the plastisol. So this ratio could actually be much higher than what we are thinking is the more I think about it mathematically. So that's something I didn't think about. Either way, it's fun, right? Okay, I've gotten to the point where this isn't any fun, and it's probably not even, oh my gosh, probably not even safe anymore. I want to make this the last one regardless of what happens. Because this is just, this is just ridiculous. God, I don't know what that heat is. 345 and it's smoking like this so that that just makes me a little nervous um look at that that came almost perfectly off the blade so we're going to make this the last shot so we might as well show it on camera oh and i don't know this takes a holy crud all right yeah this is gonna be the last one because the equipment just isn't handling anymore. Okay, that took a lot of strength. Um, we're done. We're done. We'll see what they look like when it's done, after it's cooled. This molten, drippy lava. Oh, who knows what? I'm an idiot. Okay, I got to show you something real quick here. It's become like Play-Doh. It's sticking to itself. It's just like a Play-Doh. That's really weird. And all that salt, look at that, comes right off your hands. Nasty. Blech. All right, here we go. Yeah, one and a quarter cups of salt to one cup of plastic salt. World's heaviest worms? I don't know. I don't think I'd want to get hit in the head by it. Well, I suppose we've had a hook in it, but <sighs> yeah. And look at this crap. It's still look at the memory though. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's not me farting, that's the neighbor playing with his drill against the fence. I really kind of want to keep going further, but I just can't. And I feel like once these cure, they're going to become more fragile. So, oh, hold on. No, we did reach a breaking point. Yep, we did. This is completely hollow here. It just couldn't handle it. You can't, the, the equipment fails before you can do it. So the equipment will fail on you before the actual plastisol will. I wonder if I can get this. Yep, you can see it right there. Hopefully you can, yep. She couldn't make it. 
I'd say that's a failure. So we're gonna call that the failure point. One and an eighth cup, one and a quarter cups. Wait, yeah, one and a quarter cups. Now let's go on, get on to the, uh, I want to get the weights on them. I wanna get the, well, this is gonna be a false weight because it's hollow. Anyway, we'll try. So we'll get the weights on them. We'll get what it bends. We'll get the drop rate in water. And uh, we'll take a look at the color differences. We'll do that next. Okay, so I figured the easiest thing to start with is color, clarity, I guess, whatever you want to call it. So here we have the clears. Didn't do anything to those. This is the no salt with the pigment. This is salt with no pigment. Then we get into, okay, let's just call this the standard here. I'm going to give this, I'm going to rate this one through five, kind of like I do with the molds. Um, I'm going to say that this is a five right off the bat, top of the line, best you can get. This is with a quarter cup salt. And even though it's a little duller, I'm not going to complain too much. It's really hard to capture in the capture in the camera, but it is just a slight bit fainter. I'm still going to give that a five with a quarter cup. These two are the eighth cup. Um, definitely some fading. Uh, I'm going to give that four. These are kind of the same. These are the half cup. I'm going to give that a four. These guys here are the half cup. And they're starting to fade pretty bad. I'm going to say that's a three. I'm going to go on to these here. This is the uh, five eighths. So that's going to be a two. Yeah, yeah, that's a two. Right here is the three quarter cup. I'm gonna give that a two as far as the rating. And then down here we have the three quarter cup and the seven eighths, and they are just a one. They're, I mean, it's horrible. Just, I mean, if you just look, that salt takes away all that beautiful color. So, we're going to call that the color or the clarity rating is what I'm going to go with for now. So next we're going to look at probably the the, uh, the weight, the bend, and then I'll get the, I got the old fish aquarium out, fill it with water, and uh, we'll see what the drop rate is on those and how they look. This is uh, take 100. I have... All I have is this crappy food scale to go by, and I usually use it to weigh silicone when I'm mixing it. It's supposed to do grams and such, but oh, it, I don't think it does odd numbers, so I'm not getting accurate readings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two worms at a time. We're just gonna go with it. I, this ain't gonna be accurate, but I wanna at least try. So two worms is 18. That's no salt, quarter cup salt. 22, this is 3 eighths, 24, half cup, also 24, I'm betting it's supposed to be 25, uh, going up to 5 eighths, 24, this one will not be an accurate reading because I don't have a full worm filled. I should have thought about that ahead of time. Three quarters, it's going to be less than it should be. 24, I'm guessing it really should be 26. 25 or 26. Three quarter. 26. This is the one to one. 26. See what I mean? I'm not sure how much to trust that. And here's the one and a quarter cup. Good. Showing 24. I'm going to log them. I'm just going to go with it. I can tell you if I had something a little more accurate, you'd probably see a difference of maybe a half gram per each one. I'll extrapolate it out maybe, try and figure out where exactly we're at. But the only one I think we can really trust is up to about three, three eighths cup. The ones that were one and a quarter should be much heavier. But as you recall, Look, it had holes. It didn't fill all the way. So naturally, we're losing weight there. So that's not accurate either. And wow, did that thing just fail on me. These are fully cured now, by the way. So I think that they're, um, well, that's just kind of proof. I 
think that they're going to start losing their uh, durability now that they're cured and they're not warm still and fresh so I can just feel you just hear that salt grinding away in there anyway I'm going to call that the waiting or the wait I'm going to call it done I'm going to see what I can do here next as far as showing off the the bend which would be the action or possibly the durability of it Okay, I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but i got a single hanging hook here, and I'm going to rig each one of them, and then I'm going to measure out, well, I'm just going to show you. I think that's the easiest thing to do. Rig it, let it hang. Ah, all right. It's been a long day. All right, then I'm gonna mark it. So, let's say there, there. And of course the Sharpie doesn't wanna work. So that's new. Oh, this is not gonna work very well, but oh well. That's no new salt and I'm going to go through and I'm going to do all of them like that so for example this one would be the quarter cup salt and again I guess I want to rig it so that it's perfectly centered I don't think that's going to totally happen, but uh, mm. <laughs> I'm going to save you all watching this. You're just going to have to trust me. I'm going to go through all the worms. No point in wasting time watching me do this, but I'm going to rig them up perfectly so that I get a good balance every time. Okay, so I'm done. Something interesting I figured out. It's really kind of strange. Quarter cup. Okay, so there's nothing there. Quarter cup went up a little bit. Like it had less bend. Then I go to three eighths and I get way more bend. I go to, f what was it next? Five eighths. I got to figure that one out because that went kind of wompy, but it, it had about the same bend as three eighths, actually. Then you get to half, and the half is the same as the three eighths, right? Which I thought was kind of unusual. Then you get to three quarter, and it just levels out across the way. Three eighths, seven eighths, one to one, n almost no bend, stayed almost flat, and it didn't change any. So I'm thinking that the salt just makes it so much more rigid that you get to a point of a terminal velocity, so to speak, type of figure where it just doesn't bend anymore. It just stays rigid and you get nothing out of it. Now, when I was hooking each one of these up, I got to tell you, I was being very delicate because once you get past a half cup, it, you can tell the worm wants to just split on you. Just putting a little, little tiny hook on there, a little wacky rig hook that worm just wanted to fall apart. So I'm going to keep them in the best shape I can. I'm going to rehook them for the drop tank or for the, uh, the, the dropping it in the tank, try and get the, uh, I don't know, the drop rate, or we're going to at least see how fast they drop. I think you can figure out the here we are, the faster they're going to drop, of course, but still want to do it. Still want to fill up the fit, fish tank and, uh, and give it a run and see what it looks like. Then after that, once they're wet, we've run it a few times, I'm going to see just how brittle they are and see what it takes to break them or bend them and get them to split. Now that they're cured, they, they are much more fragile than they were two days ago when I first shot them. So stay tuned and uh, we'll hit that up next. All right. So well, this, is, yeah, this is a makeshift in elementary. I don't know. This is a 10 gallon tank. Ironically, 
it's exactly 12 inches tall and I have it filled right up to the very top. I will be timing the drop rate on the best I can with another phone as far as a stopwatch. And I'm gonna try and do it as quick as I can or as accurate as I can, I should say, while testing each worm. And I'll probably do them in slow motion just so you can see what they look like. Uh, see if there's any like wiggle or wobble on the fall, which is what everybody loves the Senko for. So we're gonna start and uh, I'll keep track and record as I go. I'll probably kill the lights in the background and put on a, an extra LED light overhead so you can see a little better. And the first thing we'll start off with is, well, let's start with floating, but guess what? Yeah, we'll start with floating. All right, first up, floating worm. I don't expect to drop that fast unless it's the hook that carries it down. I'm gonna just let it touch the water and then drop. I'm gonna count that because it's not gonna go down any further. 12 seconds. All right, quarter cup plastic. One point six five. Okay, three eighths cup plastic. Redoing that one because I ended it too soon. Two point one nine. Half cup plastic. 1.6. Here we have 5 eighths. 1.37. All right, 3 quarters. 1.28. 7 eighths cup plastic. 1.26. Wow, that's only two one hundredths off from the last one. I'm seeing a pattern here. Drop rate is changing very little the heavier the more salt there is. All right, here's the one to one. 1.29. It fell slower. Hmm. All right, I'm just recording it. Anyway, just look at, I'm gonna hook them up here. Give me a second. Okay, so here we're looking at the action with one-to-one -one salt. You get a little bit of wiggle coming up. It It's so heavy, I think it acts more like the old turd bait because it's so heavy. If you do it at just the right speed, it wiggles pretty good. So I'm kind of impressed with that. But if you're not looking for it to do that, let me go back to, ooh, we just about got a hook in ourselves. If we go back to the quarter cup, I think this is more of the action most of us are looking for. You can get a little bit of that jiggle on the way down. It's got good action when you jerk it. I have to say, just in what I've seen, the quarter cup, if you're going to add salt, the quarter cup is definitely the way to go. Um, I'm going to get all the numbers out. Look at it. You know what? I'm going to time this one, too, because this drop rate does not seem... That first one, the drop rate I had was 1.65. I think it's a lot slower than that. Let me do it again. Okay, that's more what I was expecting. 
I must not have done a good recording on that one, but 1.95. That kind of lines up with everything else I'm seeing here. Anyway, <clears throat> that's what we got so far. I'm going to crunch out the numbers and maybe make a spreadsheet, maybe make some graphs. I don't know. Um, just something to uh, scientifically try to prove this with and try and figure out what is the best for what you're trying to do and what works best for you. I don't see adding more salt as a good thing or any salt. That's just me. Personally, I would rather use the floater and stick some nail weights in there. And I think you get way better action out of doing that than anything else. So here we are with our nice little graph and everything charted out. As you can see, the guys that are saying a quarter cup of salt to your full cup of plastic, they're, they're dead on. It really is. I mean, maybe go to the three eighths if you want, but you get diminishing returns, not only in your color, but your sink rate, oddly enough, that five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths, one cup, that sink rate's just a diminishing return for some reason. Same thing goes on with the bend. So much salt gets in there that the plastisol doesn't have what it takes and, and you lose that. Um, you get a faster sink rate, of course, on, uh, the, you know, on this, on the smaller weights and the less salt, but you know, somebody else wants to try and duplicate this or prove me wrong by all means. I'd, I'd certainly like to hear and watch that. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Don't like, don't subscribe. I'm not your dad. I can't tell you what to do. But thanks for sitting through this really long one. I apologize this took so long, but trust me, I cut out hours worth of stuff just to get it down to this. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.